So hello everyone and welcome today to our Being at NTU live Q&A. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's really, uh, really great actually we've got some people joining us today. Uh, my name is Benedict Wills and I'm one of your Vice Presidents at Nottingham Trent Students Union. I'm actually the Vice President for postgraduates but obviously here we're here today to talk to you about uh, prospective students and kind of our university experience. Um, I'm actually joined here today by three NTU students to talk about their student life, answer all your questions and basically tell you everything we know about Nottingham. Uh, I'll introduce them all in a second. So there are actually a lot of things to consider when you do apply for your undergraduate degree um, and we're here to kind of help you make the right decision, uh, especially for your future, uh, as that's the most important thing. Um, so we're going to hear today, we'll talk to you about kind of everything you can expect of being at NTU, what you can expect in your studies and also the wider kind of Nottingham area. Um, if you've got any questions, please comment them down below and we'll do our best to kind of get around to them. I, I'm aware that a lot of time there are loads and loads of questions that come through on stream, but we will absolutely try our best. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to our students who are here joining me today. So they're just going to say their name, their course, their year of study and what they love about NTU. So I'll pass you over. Hi, so I'm Amy and I'm a third year graphic student. And I'd say my favourite thing about Nottingham Trent is honestly the amount of things that there are to do here. So not only in the university with societies, but the city itself as well is beautiful. So much to do and it kind of, you forget you're at uni sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely, definitely. All right, and we'll move straight over then to Rakshit. Hello, my name is Rakshit. I'm a second year mechanical engineering student. And well, my favorite thing about NTU has to be our engineering building and the amount of opportunities that we get at NTU. It takes you and pushes you beyond your boundaries and helps you achieve so much. I have to say, is that the new building that we've got over in, uh, in Clifton? Is it? Yep, it is the new yeah, building. Absolutely. It's Fabulous. lovely. <laughs> Fantastic, and then we'll move straight on to Karma. Hi, my name is Karma. I'm a second year BSc product design student. And my favorite thing about NTU would have to be just the accessibility, the fact that, you know, I could go into any campus and be able to enjoy the resources from being a student here. So I definitely take full advantage of that. I love building jumping, going to see everyone's building. So yeah, it's my favorite thing. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you very much. So hopefully that kind of gives you an overall picture of what everything is like kind of at NTU really or just kind of a little snippet um, so what I'd like to say is student experience is actually a huge part of your university experience in general alongside your studies um, I at NTSU deal with all sorts of things like societies opportunities we help with employability uh, lots of mental health physical health support as well um, just to kind of support every single student we have here at NTU uh, and also the wider Nottingham area. There's so much to do in Nottingham. I mean, I've been here for five years and I haven't even done it all yet. So it's absolutely fantastic. Um, so, yeah, just so everyone remembers, if you have any questions, please submit them in the comments and we'll, again, do our best to answer them shortly. Um, I'm just going to pick on some of you now, actually. Why not? Um, Amy, let's go with you first because you came up first on the screen. As a summary, if you can summarise NTU, just in a few words, how would you describe your student experience? Um, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> it's very supportive. Um, it's very lively. It's very creative, uh, which I didn't expect when I was coming in. Um, just because I think with the campus, because it is a city campus for for one of them anyways, because all the buildings are together, you run into different people who might be doing fashion marketing, you might be doing graphic product design. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a, a community, I'd, I'd say. Absolutely. No, I, that's the, the thing I love about NTU, to be fair. Uh, you just meet so many people. Um, I'm going to say the same question now to Rakshith as well. Why not? If you can describe your student experience, how would you describe it? Oh, I would say I've had so many opportunities so far. And I would say that would probably be the highlight. Opportunities, the facilities and the amazing stuff. It's the support from the staff. So I've had the chance to travel on a research trip to Netherlands, start a drone society, start my own YouTube channel and so much more. There was even this one point where I used to struggle with academic writing. I wasn't very good. And an academic actually took time off to teach me how to write a very good report. And since then, like my, I've been surprised I could even write that well. <laughs> so I mean, that is awesome, really. Yeah, that, that sort of support is, is, is brilliant. Um, yeah, no, fantastic. And then Karma, last but not least, we'll uh, ask you the same question. How would you describe your university experience? I think my answer would have to be a combination of what Amy and Rakshit said. It's kind of 
uh, similar for me, especially coming into the UK for the first time, because I'm not from here, I'm an international student. So my first year year, I didn't really know a lot about the culture in the country, not even to talk of the city. You know, there was a lot that I didn't understand. And um, a lot of it was spent in lockdown as well. So coming out of lockdown was a little bit tricky. And just the fact that I could literally ask any single person on campus a question, and they were always so nice about it, so helpful. So definitely the community from that front, and then also the resources, um, just everything that you're able to gain from the teachers and the trips and everything so yeah definitely both the best of both worlds now that is awesome yeah it's really great actually to hear the perspective of international students as well because obviously we do get a lot of international students come to ntu there is a massive international community here and um, which is supported by the global lounge as well so that's absolutely fantastic it's great to hear so yeah again i think it's really important for all kind of prospective students to hear about that first-hand experience that you've all had um so without further ado, I think we'll start to move on to the questions and that way um, I can stop talking so much and let you carry on. But there we are. <laughs> so we'll go on to the first question. What is a typical day like for a first year student at NTU? So um, I'm actually gonna open this up to the room firstly and then I'll uh, give my personal experience. So who wants to go first? I guess first year is gonna be very fun, especially the first few days. There's like this induction where you get to meet different NTU students. At least within engineering, we've got these activities um, I think last year they had to build a uh, compare two different tubes, a copper tube and a plastic tube or an acrylic tube to see which can absorb a transfer heat better. There's so many activities like that. The first year, I don't think it even counts for your grade. So it's more like explore uh, the city, explore your course, try, meet new people, make new friends. It's a very good opportunity to kind of get that exposure very early on. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, anyone else got a kind of opposing view or similar view to Rixith? I was going to say, I, I completely agree. I'd say brace yourself for icebreakers because <laughs> there's going to be a few, but it's definitely worth it because you just, you have to get to know your course mates because they're going to be with you for the next three or four years. Um, and yeah, I definitely think exploring the city is is a good idea because it's so, it seems so big when you first come here, but it's so important to you know make it smaller make it your bubble make it your home is the most important thing so first year is all about that awesome and then uh yeah let's go on to karma then i'll let you uh, have your opportunity to speak as well um my first year half of it was spent in lockdown so that was definitely an interesting experience but i would say a typical day outside of lockdown which was in term three would be um you know come to campus we had Luckily, this was around the time that we had a 3D printing project. And so it was an amazing experience to get to meet a lot of other people on my course that I didn't see before and to put faces to the names. So it kind of goes back to the whole idea of, you know, getting to meet people, getting to know everybody. And I guess I was lucky enough that we have a very friendly bunch in our course. And so a lot of us would come up to each other and be like, oh, you're that person. You're that person. So, yeah, it's definitely very, very social. It's very nice to be around people and stuff like that in first year. Awesome. To be honest, I think I'd actually have to agree with all of you. So uh, I remember five years ago when I started, I know that sounds old, um, it's not really that old, trust me. Uh, it was mostly wake up, I just thought I'd do as much as possible. So uh, obviously meet your flatmates, that sort of thing, try and do things with them, different activities, then join societies. I think I was part of about six societies in my first year. Always something great to do because, well, it fills your time, doesn't it, really? But uh, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll move on to the second question then. See what we've got coming up next. Oh, that's the first question. <laughs> awesome. Oh, this is quite an interesting one, actually. Um, how much time do students spend studying per week? So uh, I will think I'll give a general answer for that, and then I'll see what you guys will think as well. Um, I guess it all depends on what course you have. Um, so some courses are, are mostly research-based or research-focused. Um, so you end up doing less in contact time, but a lot of time studying outside. Uh, some are mostly practical courses, things like uh, the School of Animal, Rural and Environmental Sciences over at Brackenhurst. Um, they do a lot of hands on work, so it's, it's a bit less studying and more practical elements of the courses. Um, I myself was a law student, so mine was purely academic and uh, there wasn't as many opportunities to be as practical, apart from things like mooting and, uh, and court practice, which was really good fun. Um, so I spent all oh, good. 30 hours a week, I think it was in the end, uh, actually researching. But uh, yeah, how about everyone else? What, what's your thoughts on this? I'm gonna pick on people, let's go with Amy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I do graphics and it's very much, um, you have it taken away all the time in the back of your mind, but they always say, try to treat it as a nine to five. And that's the sort of hours that you should be doing. 
um but it always overruns i'm not gonna lie <laughs> you know you're like you might you might do your nine to five and then in in the evening think oh i need to do this or i want to do this and so you end up at midnight doing some lino printing or something but i think that's the beauty of it is the building's always open that so i'm based in the waverly building and i think it's open to like 11 at night so mm. it accommodates for whenever you need to work basically but yeah it's graphics is full time <laughs> Fantastic. And then uh, let's, have a, let's hear from Karma from the international perspective, because that'd be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I 100% agree with Amy, because I also do a design course, product design, and it's it's more or less the same thing. With us, um, we have kind of nine to fives on Tuesdays, and the rest of the other days is kind of half days, and some days will only come in once a week. So we do have a bit more time to study outside of the classroom. But I can guarantee that you will be living in the library and in the studios towards the final week of a deadline, even if you've been spending like five to eight hours a day studying anyways, which is what myself and a lot of people I know do, you will 100% spend like the week up to deadline week just living in the library, taking advantage of the fact that studio closes at like 9 p.m. So yeah, that's what I will say. Absolutely. And Brixie, do you agree with that? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, engineering, this is the course that I'm doing is quite intense. So it does require a lot of hours in each week and closer to the deadline, just as Kavma said, yeah, you've got to spend the nights in the library. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I was quite lucky because a lot of mine, especially last year, were all coursework. So it was um, kind of focused or spread out throughout the year. So uh, I had a lot easier time than you, you three seem to have had at this point, but there we are. <laughs> right then, I think we'll move on to the next question. What do you do outside of lectures? So I'm going to open this question up to the room again. Would anybody like to go first? I guess I'm more of the nerdy type. So outside of lectures, I'm more doing my own research. So even I recently got this really cool vibration meter and I've been working with our prof one of our professors mm -hmm. on studying uh, vibrations in aircraft and different places. We've been just going around sampling vibration data, trying it in our aircraft lab in our engineering building. Apart from that, I run the drone society as well. I help run that. So we go out, we fly drones, get some amazing shots of Clifton Campus. You should see that on NTU social, some of the pictures that they've posted. And apart from that, I'm even a student mentor. So I, I usually spend quite some time with my mentees, um, helping them out, sort of offering support. And I'm there for the students and I do those kind of stuff. Awesome. Thank you very much. Let's move on to Karma next. Why not? Um, similar to Rakshith, I'm a little bit on the nerdy side as well. That's probably just because I really like my course. So when I'm outside of lectures, I do a lot of work anyways, just because I like to stay ahead and I like to just kind of keep up with all the new design trends and look at other um, design students or um, portfolios in for people in different universities and things like that that can kind of inspire me to help me better myself as a designer and better my own portfolio, my own sense of design. So I do a lot of that. And when I'm not doing that, I love music. So I'm usually Usually, uh, probably playing my guitar, probably writing a song. I'm in the music society actually, and unfortunately, I've been so busy for the last two months. I haven't been able to go yet, but I have a bit of time tomorrow, so I'm going for my first time tomorrow. Oh, fantastic! To be fair, if you could sing a song for us now, that'd be great. But uh, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't do that to you. <laughs> right, let's move on to Amy then. <laughs> uh, so I, I live in a house of the graphics course. So again, yeah proper nerd <laughs> I, I think third year me isn't as interesting as second and first year but it is just kind of cracking on with work really and then we have um in our house we try to make sure we're like right we need to get outside today so we'll go for a walk around go to a coffee shop or something or even better go to bonnington because you can use your student card to buy coffee so yeah <laughs> it's just work to be honest <laughs> <laughs> that is actually a really good tip for anyone coming to ntu uh a lot of the time you don't use all your print credit and uh, you can use that on food at some of the uh, NTU cafes, definitely. Um, to be honest, I have a slightly different answer to that one, but um, yeah, most of the time at the lectures, I just did a lot of extracurricular things really, society, sports clubs, so absolutely. Great answers, thank you everyone. So what kind of things are there to do in Nottingham? Oh, that's quite an interesting one really. We'll go with Karma first, because I've realized I've put you second for all the other answers so far. Go ahead. <laughs> Right now, I'm going to speak about what's happening right now. Right now, we have a Christmas market in Nottingham, so that's probably the most exciting thing that's going on at the moment. 
um, every it's in Market Square. So every once in a while I'll walk by because I do like to walk around Market Square. They have a lot of nice shops in the area. And obviously we had Black Friday recently. So that's been another big thing. It's been going shopping around Market Square for Black Friday and just walking around, seeing the Christmas market. It's, it's so fun. It's, it looks beautiful. There's a lot of attraction, so many foods. I've seen like Greek foods, um, British foods. There's like a lot of things going on right now in Market Square. So I would say that's the highlight of this point in time of the year in Nottingham. Awesome, thank you very much. And we'll move on to Amy. Uh, so there's a really lovely place called Nottingham Contemporary and it's just an art gallery. And every now and again, they'll switch up the exhibitions. That's a really good place to go. I think it's free as well. I don't think you have to pay. Um, but I'd say, to be honest, after lockdown last year, because there wasn't a lot to do, it was just spent going on walks and finding places. And there are some proper nice sort of secret places that you wouldn't necessarily know about unless you just went out and had a walk around. And um, there's Park Estate and there's a like, a like a cave tunnel that you have to go through. I won't I won't spoil it because that's that's a good secret one to try and find yourself. Um, but yeah, I yeah, I definitely agree. The Christmas market is always good. Um, just going out into town is is a day in itself. So. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, like you said, there's so much to do in Nottingham. It's an absolute nightmare. Uh, I'll let Seath go next and I'll give my little answer as well. Yeah, there are loads of stuff to do in Nottingham. We've got ice skating rinks, great cinemas. We've even got our own metronome, which is a really like bunch of musical gigs that keeps happening, which is part of NTU Confetti. There's, and based on seasons, we've got different things that keep happening. The Christmas fair, we've got Christmas at Wallerton, at Wallerton Park, which is a very beautiful uh, light kind of exhibitions sort of thing which is wonderful and yeah just based on the seasons, there's so many things that keep happening so there's always something new and every year is different and that's what makes staying in nottingham quite exciting awesome and actually yeah just to add on to that as well uh, like you said seasonally there's all sorts of different things going on i remember when i was a student um we have things like goose fair which i believe is Ooh, I don't know if it's Europe's or England's biggest fair. I'm going to have to fact check myself on that one, but it's a, it's a massive fair every year. Unfortunately, it was cancelled this year due to COVID, which was an absolute shame. Um, obviously, like you said, Wilton Park, uh, they also do loads of musical events there as well. Um, one thing we had when I was in my second year, I believe it was, um, Michael Bibby came down for like a long weekend. I think it was a part of the Detonate Festival. Um, and it was absolutely fantastic. It was really good fun. Again, all sorts of different types of music in Nottingham. There is a, a bodega, which has loads of up and coming artists as well with Rough Trade as well. Um, we here at the SU have now started, um, I think it's now going to be called Trent Services Limited. So we're going to have more and more gigs on there. We've got the Wombats coming down uh, in the, shortly. I'm not sure when that is actually. Um, so yeah, all sorts of different places to kind of perform, to go out, kind of do other things. If you're a musical fan, you're in a really, really good place considering we do have the uh, the theatre right next to our city campus as well um, which is just absolutely fantastic but yeah loads of sort of venues and loads of things to do really it's absolutely fantastic wonderful i think we'll move on to the next question then what is the food like on campus or oh, i've got a good answer for this but i'm going to move on to rick Seath first yeah the food is great you get pizza there's a lot of healthy options as well as our as well as the pizzas pastas loads of food available I know that at the point they've introduced an, a new menu and there's some really cool options there. I've got to check those all out as well, but I think Benedict, you'll be the best to answer that. Fantastic. Do you know what? I might, I might quickly go next then just to uh, just to put my point in there. Um, so yeah, there's actually all sorts of different places to go on campuses uh, at both, well, both I say, all, all the campuses. Um, that includes Mansfield and Confetti. Um, I'm not quite clued up on the food options there, but if you go to Brackenhurst, you've got the Life Building, which has a brand new cafeteria in there. They do different food every day. Um, it's absolutely fantastic, to be honest. I do love Fish Friday. Yeah, that is a really good thing, and I'm top tier as well. Um, if you head to any of the Students' Union buildings, we've also got our own menu. It is now brand new as well. Um, we've only recently updated it, essentially. Um, that was this year, so that's a whole new menu in there, new kitchen equipment, all that sort of things, which is fantastic. Then one place, which is a big secret, for some reason, I didn't know people, why people didn't know about this, is the World Kitchen up in Newton Building and City Campus. They do a different thing every day. They have amazing burritos. We always do burritos Fridays if I'm here on this campus. If I'm at Brack, it's Fish Fridays. If I'm at City, it's Burrito Fridays. And I recommend it to everyone. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if Amy and Carla, you have anything to add to that at all? I do just love fish and burritos, apparently. 
Yeah, I've been waiting for this question because <laughs> I've like made it my personal mission to go to every single food place on the city campus. So I haven't been able to see every single one of them, but I've seen almost all of them. And I would have to say Cafe Newton makes like some of the best um some of the best sausage rolls on campus, definitely. Goldsmith is one of the most beautiful cafes that we have on campus. It's genuinely so beautiful inside there. And they do really good um, flatbread meals. So that's really great for that as well. And I agree, World Kitchen is so underrated because you kind of have to go like around the area to get to World Kitchen. So a lot of people don't know it's there, but it's it's also really beautiful. And they do um, new things every day as well. So I would definitely have to go into those three. I think Bonington is very beautiful in terms of the vibe of it. And they also have really good coffee and snacks in, in there. So I'll give it to those four as well. Ah, awesome. I have to say, World Kitchen, I only knew about it in third year. So uh, it's exactly <laughs> hidden away. But uh, yeah, and we'll move on to Amy. I don't know if you've had the food on campus yet or... I feel so uneducated on the food. I haven't <laughs> heard of any of these places. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll, I'll be going to Newton tomorrow. But um, <laughs> I mean, there's Starbucks in the library. <laughs> That's where I go. Um, or Bonington is a good one as well. Um, it's super easy because you've got the Bonington art shop as well. So it's a bit of a trap. You go into the art shop and then you think, oh, should I have a coffee? And then you do. Um, but yeah, that's... I know. I, I don't really have anything to say about that. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. You'll have to go on a uh, on a food tour with Karma then, kind of around all the campuses. <laughs> I just want to add in. I'm a vegan myself, and then there are loads of vegan options available on all our campuses. So all, most of the dietary things are taken care of. You could just let a staff know if you have any special dietary requirements. Absolutely. And thank you, Rusi, for pointing that out. Obviously, uh, all of our catering services are completely um, inclusive of everyone's um, either personal preferences or if your dietary preferences as well. Absolutely. Right. I think we'll move on to the next question then, considering we talked about food for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Lovely. Which clubs and societies are you in? So I'm going to open this up to the group again. Uh, let's go with Karma. I'll let you go first. All right. So I feel like a little bit of a fraud just because I'm in three societies and I haven't gone to anything so far because I've been so busy with my course. But the three societies that I'm in are the Music Society. Uh, they have this band development program that they told me about at the start of the year, which is something that I'm interested in. So that's definitely something that I want to uh, be more of a part of. And it's something that I'm going to start doing as of tomorrow. There's also the Design Society, which I chose to do because I do design as a course. And I thought it would be nice to do something to do with design that isn't just part of my course. They do like clay modeling workshops, um, Photoshop workshops. They do like a lot of things. They also do a lot of activities in general, just all societies in general tend to do like Ocean Wednesdays and a few other things. So that's another thing that now that I have a little bit more time for, I will probably go to the next event that they have, which I think is next Wednesday. And then I'm also in the African and Caribbean Society, which they haven't done as much so far this year, but I'm looking forward to the next event that they do. No, that is awesome. I have to say the uh, African Caribbean Society are brilliant. They do all sorts of events literally all the time. So, uh, yeah, plenty of things to get involved in there. Absolutely. How about you then, Amy? Uh, yeah, so I'm part of the Broadcasting Society. So that's the um, uni radio station, Fly Live. And I'm, I'm the same, I can't lie. I've not, <laughs> I've not really been to many of the sessions, but they have really good social events. Um, but if you follow them on Instagram and things, they, they're they really good at keeping up to date. I mean, they have to be, but really good at keeping up to date with the news, not just in the university, but in general, like across the country, across the world, um, because that's the sort of subjects that they cover uh, in their shows. So it's a really good way of just keeping up with, with what's going on in the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. A nice little plug there as well. I have to say, Fly Live, I was actually on it the other day, which was excellent. On the Monday night, had a food for thought with uh, with India and Tasha, and it was great fun because I spoke about food for ages. How about you then, Raxith? Well, the societies have been a very good place for me to learn and or gain new skills, in addition to just meeting new people. I've had the opportunity to start my own drone society where we play around with drones. In addition to that, I recently joined the Conservation Society and they're doing some really good work at Brackenhurst campus and they keep winning awards every year. They're, they're a really charming and upcoming society. And all these societies get so much exposure during the Freshers' Fair and that's something that every first year should definitely visit. And I've made a video on YouTube on that. So if you just give a search for uh, NTU Freshers' Fair on YouTube, you'll get to see how amazing our Freshers' Fair is. 
I have to say I have seen that video as well and it is really informative so if anyone wants to learn anything about societies that sort of thing definitely head over and see that or just head to the uh, Trent Students webpage. I have to say when I was a student I was part of the Drama Society and we got the opportunity to perform at the Nottingham Arts Theatre um, which was fantastic in front of a sold out crowd which was great for uh, for rent and then we did Spring Awakening the year after so that was always good fun and then uh, I'm actually part of a sports club as well which was Trent Rugby League um, although I am very small and it hurt a lot but uh, that's only because I'm small and it hurt a lot essentially but it was really good fun and you meet all sorts of lovely people so uh, thank you guys for pointing that out absolutely fantastic I think we'll move on to the next question then oh it's an interesting one what is your favorite spot on campus let's go with Amy first Oh, that's a good question. I mean, there there is the Arboretum, which is right next to the campus, um, which is a really beautiful park. And it's it, it's just like the little pocket of green in Nottingham. So I, I like going there because back home is all sort of woodland and stuff. So it's nice just to go there uh, for a little breather from everything. Um, but I mean, my, my course is based in the Waverley building. So I'd have to say that's probably my favourite part of, of campus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Love, love the courses I'm hearing at the moment, which is great. Uh, let's go on to Ruxy. Yeah, I'm honestly divided between our Clifton campus and student union because I love spending time studying there and doing my own work. There is a Costa coffee there, which makes amazing coffee. And the, my other favorite spots actually are engineering building. We've got an aircraft lab where we simulate different cabin environments. So when we did this trip to Netherlands, we collected quite a bit of vibration data. And there's a video on that coming soon on NTU's page. So we're trying to simulate that and I keep playing around over there during my free time. Absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, the facilities you've got over at Clifton are absolutely amazing at the moment. So I'm very envious of you. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. And then we'll move on to Karma. Um, my favorite spots on campus is a bit funny because I don't spend as much time as I'd actually like to. My favorite spots on campus, my two would have to be definitely the rooftop garden on the library. I think it's really beautiful. It's so nice up there. The greenery, it's genuinely a very beautiful place. If, if no one's been there yet, you definitely have to take the elevator, go to the um, top floor and see the rooftop garden. And then also Goldsmith, because I think, again, I think it's just the most beautiful cafe on campus. I think it's very beautiful. But because of my course and because I'm so busy all the time, I actually think I spend more time probably in the library and in the studio, in Maudsley, in my building. And to be fair, Maudsley, the studios in Maudsley kind of underrated. So I will, I'll put Maudsley up there as the third. Awesome. I mean, I, I'm, I've not been really been in Maudsley that much, so it's, uh, it's quite interesting to hear about it, actually. You did indeed, though, steal my favourite place, which was the Rooftop <laughs> Gardener Books Library. So uh, I'm not annoyed. I'm just disappointed. No, I'm joking. Um, the other really good one, actually, I don't know if anyone's got a chance to go out there yet, is to Brackenhurst and see the animal unit. Um, you can't go in the actual veterinary building itself, but obviously you've got all the horses there. There's donkeys, there's goats, there's all sorts of animals. So uh, if you're an animal lover like myself, it's a great place to go because it is fantastic. Awesome. So I think after that, we'll move on to the next question then. <laughs> Lovely. So this is actually from prospective student as well. Could you describe what your first day was like? Or oh, for me, that was five years ago. So uh, I'm actually going to pass this one on to Karma first. <laughs> Yeah, my first day, I can remember it perfectly because I was class of 2020. Obviously, we graduated on Zoom at my school, so I did not have any indication of what university life was like at all. So I came in 100% blind. And for my first day, even though we were um, online, I still actually wasn't in the UK yet because I was still sorting out visa things. So I was still abroad when I started my first day and I was quite nervous. I was like, oh, my God. Is there, like what how's this gonna go? I don't know what it's like to study in the UK, you know, what if they're gonna do activities I'm not used to? It was very nerve-wracking. And then um we started doing a, a stream. So we started on Teams. Um the stream started, the teachers were there, everyone had their cameras on. It was definitely very interesting to get to see everyone's faces and be like, Oh, okay, this is this is this person, this is that person, nice to meet you. And then they would split us up into little breakout rooms every 30 minutes, and then we do group activities in those breakout rooms. And for like five of those breakout rooms, I just happened to, you know, be with this same one person in like four out of five different breakout rooms. And that's how we became friends. And now she's one of my best friends on my course. So I'm really grateful to the breakout rooms for my friend Sophie. 
But yeah, I would say it was definitely a nerve wracking experience until we kind of started to talk a little bit and then get to know one another. And it kind of just eased in more. We did a few activities, a few things to do with design. They were like, oh, pick your favorite design building, your favorite designer, your favorite piece of art, that kind of thing. So once we started to do that, my nerves definitely settled a lot more and I'm a lot more comfortable now. Oh, that is awesome, actually. It's great to hear that you've uh, you've kind of settled in now, and obviously you are over, I believe that's Newton Building, is it, behind you? I think. Yeah, I'm in the Newton Building right now. I'm on the fourth Absolutely. floor. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, it's obviously great to actually have you over here rather than obviously doing online, because uh, online isn't as great as being in person, in my personal opinion, but uh, there we go. That's fantastic. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. We'll move, move on to Rick Sheath then. Well, my first day, I remember that quite clearly. It was my first time on the campus, I had been on any campus tours, anything before. There was there were a few student ambassadors wearing pink hoodies, and they were they took me around the campus. They showed me around. They took me to my. They actually escorted me all the way to my class, and then they, from there, I think the personal tutor took us for a tour around. They showed us around. We had these groups where we had we chatted with other students. We had few activities to get to know other students. It was a very interesting time, and I honestly miss those days the first my first year and the first week where we actually were very social there was so much time for us to try new things and meet new lecturers meet the lecturers and the staff as well oh that's awesome to be fair mine's uh, a little bit different to that actually because uh, although there were the, the pink tops and the, the NTU ambassadors I remember when I moved in I moved in uh, on campus actually at Gill Street South which is the building I can see just at the corner of this window um, and when I moved in, obviously my mom had a little cry and that sort of thing, and it was very emotional. Um, but there was the, the freshest team from NTSU, uh, which is what we run here, um, who helped me move everything in. They made sure I was settled, um, all that sort of thing, really. And they made sure we went to the freshest fairs, got involved with different things. And uh, if it wasn't for them, really, I probably wouldn't have had the same experience I've had now. So um, that was really good to hear, though. If NTU ambassadors are doing the same thing, it's uh, it really was a nice experience, actually. But uh, how about you, Amy? Yeah, so I remember moving into my accommodation. It was just absolutely tipping it down with rain. And it was all the student uh, assistants trying to carry in my boxes, but they were very helpful, so it was great. Uh, but I just remember like having all my stuff in my room and then you could just hear music outside and just people like talking to each other, getting to know each other. And then in terms of my first day at, at my course, I just remember, first of all, it took me forever trying to work out that you have to tap your car to get into the building. So that was fun. Um, and then I just remember being like coming into this room of all these like-minded people and I was quite lucky because beforehand they'd set up a Facebook group chat or something for everyone on the course. It was literally a case of going around the room of, oh, it's you, oh, it's you. Yeah. So it, it's such an exciting day and it's one that, you know, we, we've all remembered our first day of uni. So it does make such an impact. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, I think that's really important, the fact that you said that, um, get in touch with group chats and things because um, they are really useful. Obviously, I, I already got a nickname before I even got to university and everyone started calling me Benny because um, I said I used to have a cat called Benny. Um, tough luck, but uh, it was really good. Obviously, it was the icebreaker of the group and it made sure everyone was actually really friendly. And I absolutely loved it. So, uh, no, 100 percent. The first day is really important. Um, and just make sure you get involved with things, really, is what I'll say. Lovely. I think we move on to the next question then. How visible, fe sorry, visible, feasible, can't even speak today, uh, would it be to stay at Clifton campus and commute to lectures on city campus? So I think that's actually a question for Rook Seath, really, because uh, you are our resident Clifton student. Yeah, I don't think living in Clifton campus and coming to city campus is, I don't think any problems at all. Like there's bus number four that comes right on campus. It runs quite late into the night. So even if you're studying at city, living at Clifton, uh, there's no problem commuting and Clifton in fact is quite a beautiful campus there's just so much to do the library is very peaceful it's a nice kind of slightly away from the city so it lets you focus it, it's a nice environment there's a nice nature trail behind our Clifton campus where you can go for walks it's a very nice place to stay and commute to city and the bus rides about 20-25 minutes and you can even opt to take the tram which is a few minutes the tram stops a few minutes walk away or you could cycle to Clifton to city like I used to do back in summer. Absolutely, no, that is the best bit really. Um, I have to say, uh, I know students who also live in the city and study at Brackenhurst, um, so a lot, a lot further, but it, it does seem to be going really well. So uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, no, thank you very much, Rasith. I think we'll move straight on to the next question. 
I wanted to do a graphics like Amy. I was just wondering what her tips are for preparing for course slash life as a graphics student. Oh, go ahead then, Amy. This is very interesting. Um, so I remember, so for our first day, they said have, oh my God, it was so many different materials. They wanted you to have chalk, to have charcoal, to have um, scalpel, cutting board. All I can say is whatever materials or whatever equipment you can get your hands on, do it because there will be a time guaranteed on the course that you'll be able to use them. Um, start collecting really is all I can say. You've, you've become very much a hoarder <laughs> doing the graphics course because you never know when you're going to use stuff. Um, in terms of life as a graphics student, I would say just prepare yourself for a lot of work. Um, because I remember in first year, there was only one other person who did uh, graphics in my accommodation or in my flat anyway. And everyone was like, oh, you have it so easy. You do a creative course. And we just kind of looked at them like, so it's a lot of work <laughs> so you still prepare yourself but it is I, I did it as a degree because it is my hobby so that's why I can still enjoy it <laughs> um but yeah I'd say just just prepare yourself for that but just enjoy it definitely experiment with whatever you can um just really get stuck in and that's that's the only way that you're going to make the most of it really Absolutely. I think I'll, uh, I'll echo that sentiment. Definitely get ready for university life. Get pens. That's something I didn't do. I always write down my notes. And I never had a pen on me. So uh, absolutely. Wonderful. So I think we move on to the next question then. What is the accommodation like? Oh, I think I'll go off to Karma for this one first and then we'll go around the room. Um, in terms of accommodation, I'm probably going to have to speak as someone that stayed in an off-campus accommodation because I wasn't able to get halls at NTU because those, those things go fast, like scary fast. Like you have to be ready to definitely get in there, fight for, to get your accommodation quite early on. But if you don't get accommodation on campus, don't panic because I worked as a campus ambassador last year and I had a couple of students who would um, ask me during campus tours like, oh, um, I haven't got my accommodation sorted yet. You know, is it going to be hard for me? And I would say, no, just don't panic about that. Because the lovely thing about living in Nottingham is that it's not like London or Manchester where everything is it's a huge city and things are very far away. Way, especially given the fact that we um, at NTU are quite central to almost everything in the city. So no matter where you stay, you're never going to be about more than maybe like a 20 minute walk maximum away. I stayed at the glass house, which is off campus, and it was an eight minute walk away. This year I'm staying at a house, which is a 16 minute walk away, and I take the tram. It's only 10. So definitely don't worry about if you are not able to find accommodation on campus, you will find something and it will still be great. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think I'd echo that sentiment as well, definitely. But uh, I think we'll move on to Amy next, because I think you said something about people helping you move in on your first day. So uh, what accommodation were you in? Yeah, so I was I was in Gill Street South uh, because it's basically it's right next to the Waverley building. So I, I had it very lucky <laughs> um, and then conveniently next to Spoons as well. But that's another thing. Um, but yeah, so Gill Street. Um, it's got, it, you feel very secure in, in Gill Street, you know, like it's only the people who live there who can get in. Um, and it's just, it, I think it's the most modern one that they've got. And it's just, it's just a really lovely place to live, really. <laughs> it's, yeah. and it's sort of the more central one. But then, of course, you've got Sandy opposite as well. And you've got Gill Street North next to it. Um, so it's not like you're isolated or anything. You've got all the other accommodations there as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, again, I completely agree with you there. Um, yeah, I was absolutely uh, in Gill Street South as well in my first year, about five years ago now. Um, and it was it was fantastic. It was one of the best experiences of my life, actually living in halls. Um, I think then I was happy to move into a house because I started getting older. And uh, obviously, halls life is quite loud, quite in your face. But it was a, it was a fantastic experience, really. But um, yeah, and just like Karma said, over in Lenton, we have loads and loads of HMO licenses, which is a uh, housing and multiple occupants. So there's always somewhere to live in Nottingham. Uh, don't worry if you don't get into into your accommodation. How about you, Rexy? Well, I see the private accommodation myself, and I chose to stay in the city and commute to Clifton. So I kind of get the perks of the city campus. I use the facilities of the city, and sometimes I'm at the using the facilities of the Clifton. So I've been to the Boots Library and all those different places. So I don't really see much of a difference between the uh, sit, staying in a private accommodation or 
a uni accommodation, except uni is probably just a bit closer. There's always the option to commute. There's bus passes and all that. So it's an, I'd say both are a very nice place to stay. First year, definitely staying on campus would be the way to go. You get to, it's, you get to meet so many people. So you make so many friends which last lifetimes. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that, that is, that's definitely something to uh, to kind of point out as well is uh, you do make friends for life in your halls. So uh, I actually had a friend coming up and visit me uh, literally yesterday. Um, and we I met him on the first day of university. And that is the best thing about living in any sort of university accommodation. If it's purpose built student accommodation. So, for example, if you live at something like the Vantage or the Rise or, as Karma said, the Glass House, it's really, really great opportunity just to kind of be part of the student experience. And uh, I think that's what the accommodations are really there to do to begin with. Um, it kind of gets you out of your shell a little bit more, gets you engaging with other people uh, and just gets you involved. And that's what we love about it, definitely. So I think we'll move on to the next question then. What sports opportunities does NTU have? This is actually a fantastic question. I, I don't mind answering this on myself really. Um, so sporting opportunities, I think we have around about 60 to 70 sports clubs at the moment. Um, we actually have our resident vice president for sport, which is Zoe Clifton, and she helps deals with all the committee members, make sure the elections run fairly and make sure the sports are, are very inclusive for everybody. Um, if you can think of a sport, and this is the way I like to say it, um, it probably exists at NTU, uh, either as a, an actual team or a play for fun session, which is somewhere you can just go ahead. I think it's like two pounds a session and you get to do or, or essentially meet new people and then play the, whatever sport you're kind of interested in. Um, I think one of the big things that I was part of was rugby league. Um, we were part of a national league, so we headed down to Exeter, to Bath, to London to play St Mary's. They're a very good team, and it was a it was really good part, a really good kind of opportunity to play part of that actually. Um, and yeah, so I think they are or were going for the top ten in sports in the country, but I think we're top twenty, so it is something to shout about. And uh, yeah, the sporting opportunities are endless. If you just head on over to uh, ntu.ac.uk forward slash sport. I believe it is, and you can see it all on there. Awesome. So I think we'll move on to, I believe, this is the last question. How many lectures do you have on average per week? So we'll move straight on to Amy, because you're next to me on the screen. Um, I'd say this probably differs uh, depending on what year you're in. I did a lot more lectures in the first year, so it would be at the start of the week, we'd have like a business meeting, which would be an overview of what was going to come for the rest of the week. Uh, we'd have... I mean, for me, it's different because of, because of the nature of my course. So Tuesday would be a studio day where you'd come in and you'd have like a set time with your tutor and then the rest of the day was in um, in the studio. And then Wednesdays, generally, I think we get off because it's sort of the extracurricular kind of day. Uh, that'll be the day for um, guest lecturers and things like that. And then Friday, I think, was a studio day as well. And you'd have like a final lecture of the week. Um, and then this year, because it's final year, it's sort of self-led study. So I probably get one one lecture a week and then the rest of it is sort of, you know, open studio time. So it is very much up to you to kind of work out when you're going to do your work, really. <laughs> no, that is awesome. I think that's a good point as well. Definitely be organised because it's needed. <laughs> Lovely. We'll move on to uh, Karma next. Yeah, my course is almost exactly like Amy's in terms of, you know, the structure with the whole Tuesdays and Fridays are studio days. Wednesdays are um, days off. So you have guest lectures. I think ours is like alternate. So like every two weeks we'll have a guest lecturer. Sometimes we'll have um, every Wednesday for like a good three weeks and then we won't have a guest lecture on the next Wednesday. But yeah, it, it definitely alternates. So do check your timetable if you're doing a design course typically and you have guest lecturers. Um, and then Mondays for us, Mondays are electronics days because we're the BSc course, not the BA course. So we do um, electronics and a little bit more technical stuff like mechatronics and all that stuff. So um, I would say in terms of lectures, lectures are kind of embedded in studio days anyways. So I, I don't know if I would say I have two lectures a week based on the fact that it's on Tuesdays and Fridays, but it's kind of embedded within the studio. So you don't really feel it. No, that is awesome, to be fair. No, fantastic. And then uh, go ahead then, Ruxith, you're the last but not least. <laughs> yep. Our course, we've got about five to six lectures a week, and sometimes we have a few guest lectures. We've even got the IMEC E, which is the institute, in, it's basically for chartered engineers. They come down and give us talks every so often, or almost every other week. 
So in terms of lectures, I think that's what, how we have it. We've got most of our lectures are on one day on Tuesday. So they're almost back to back with just a lunch break, which kind of makes it nice because you just have to come to campus morning to evening and you kind of get most of it done. Friday is a relatively a more relaxed day for us with very few classes. And when we have it, it's usually online lectures and building our portfolios and developing ourselves professionally. We've got loads of labs. It's Our course is quite hands-on and we've got that spread across the week. Mondays, we've got labs with our electronics. Thursdays, we've got lab with, um, where we learn how to use MATLAB, which is basically from um, maths. When we learn how to use computational fluid dynamics, ANSYS, those kind of softwares on, I think that's Thursdays as well. So it's basically spread across the week and there are loads of lectures and this really varies week to week. And we keep we have to keep checking on now when the lectures are and um, whether they're online, in person or where the location is. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, just to echo that as well, uh, obviously it all depends on your timetabling. Um, a lot of the times they might be on different days. I remember during my first year, uh, I had a lot of lectures on the Monday and Tuesday. And then once we finished some modules, uh, when it came after Christmas, we uh, started other ones and then my lectures are different. So um, yeah, I think I had about 12 contact hours a week and then that went down when I was in uh, doing my master's degree. Um, but absolutely, it all kind of changes really, um, kind of week to week, but absolutely. So I believe that is actually all the questions for today. Um, so if your question wasn't answered, please get in touch with us kind of on social media. You can message me privately as well on any of my social medias or on my email, which is just my name uh, at su.ntu.ac.uk. Uh, and we'll be happy to answer any of them. Um, you can also find out any more information you want about our future live events at ntu.ac.uk forward slash applying. That was a mouthful to say. It should be at the bottom of your screens now. Um, I'd like to say thank you, everyone, for joining us today and all of the guests. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming here and answering all the questions. Lovely. And uh, we'll see you all soon.